Okay guys, we're back working on the chassis of the 1913 Duesenberg cycle car. Today we're working on the steering assembly. So, finally got some parts from BMI. Uh, things are slow right now because of quarantine. So, we've got a 30 or 5 8 inch by 3, 34 inch uh, shaft. There's a part number from BMI. Other manufacturers or suppliers have, I think this is an Azusa part because of the AZ8137-34. Um, we also got the Pitman arms. I had these left over, but just in case you need to order these separately, there's a part number for the Pitman arms from BMI. Uh, like I said, other places have that same item. And you can buy this, uh, you can buy this as a full kit with the Pitman arms and the steering shaft. I do recommend you get it unwelded. They offer one that's welded, but the Pitman arms may not be where you want them. So you can put them where you want and then weld them on. Uh, I will have to extend, expand these to 3 8 inch because they come as 5 16 here. This is a 5 8 inch hole here for the shaft, and this is 5 16 for a standard uh, tie rod, but ours are 3 8 so I have to expand that a little bit. Um, then I've got this Speedway quick release, and there's the quick release part number from Speedway. It's about 25 bucks. Um, this makes getting in and out of your cart a lot easier. This part actually welds to this end of the shaft. You just slide that on and weld it. You can adjust it in and out to kind of give you some adjustment um, for your length of your shaft if you need to almost get another inch or, inch or two out of it if you needed to. Um, the next part is these bearing flangettes. Um, I haven't used these before. These are kind of nice. They've got a little rubber backing on them to maybe isolate the uh, movement. So you see it sits on the, on the table a little bit proud. I guess if you bolt it down, it kind of crushes that rubber to isolate the movement. Um, and there's a part number. I got these from BMI also. So there's a part number for that. I'm getting two of those for the upper and lower areas. And uh, this is part 10 of the chassis build. Uh, one more thing I got to show you. Almost forgot these. So these are little locking collars. Uh, these have a little keyway, or not keyway, but a uh, Allen wrench bolt on them. And these go on the top and bottom to keep the shaft from sliding up and down. Now that these do have. Uh, Allen heads on them, but we put this on here just to give it extra protection so that your column doesn't slide in or out as you're driving. Uh, these are the part numbers. I got these at Ace. I think they're about three dollars or so each. Um, so we'll put those one at the top, one at the bottom, uh, in front or behind these deals. So we got to make some brackets, get them mounted up to the cart. I'm going to put a bracket here and a bracket down here on this cross member. So First thing I got to do is drill out those. So let's get started. Beautiful. Okay, so I'm mocking up the steering column and clearancing it. Uh, I've got six inches of clearance from the top of this uh, cross member to the top of the steering column. And that seems to work pretty good with the body line and the, and the steering wheel. That's just kind of sitting on there right now. Um, the bush or the uh, bearings are mounted to a plate I drilled out, and so this is going to slide up here, and we'll have to rig up a bracket to uh, attach that to the frame. And then down here at the front, same thing. I've got some bricks and some magnets just kind of holding everything in place. So there's the bearing in the little bracket. And so I got to, I might rebuild this bracket with uh, with a longer leg on it so I can just weld it directly to here and then gusset it. In fact, I, I think that's exactly what I'm going to do. I want to take this off and uh, make this this much. I'm going to take a measurement here and uh, recut this piece so that it actually touches the ground. So that might be a lot easier to do. So let's uh, let's work on that. Okay, so this is what I came up with. I just added to the plate because I had, to be, had this angle anyway and I didn't have a piece of steel big enough to make this all out of one piece and bend it. So uh, this worked out pretty good. I welded this small piece on um, and then welded my other piece bracket I already had to it and then I supported it with some half inch square tubing from the back side and uh, it is plenty solid so that should hold up just fine. Most of the movement in this is side to side uh, when the tie rods are, are banging back and forth so should not be a problem. Uh, so now we're going to rig up uh, the front or the top one. Okay so lower and upper mount are done. I got to finish weld this. I just cut off these straps. What this is is some strapping it was left over from a fence project and um, I made this, this is going to weld here, but be bolted on here because once we put our quick release on the shaft here and that's welded on and the tie rods, uh, the pitman arms are welded on, this won't be removable. So we want this to be able to be unbolted from the car and take the steering column out if ever need to be done. So two bolts, um, this little plate will remove along with the bearing, these are just bolted from the back side 
to those straps. I'm gonna gust at this strap a little bit, but right now it's it's pretty sturdy. I mean, it, it, it wiggles, but only because this whole bar is wiggling a little bit. So I might put some gussets across here. Excuse me, my finger's in the way, it's through here. Uh, just to eliminate some of this flex that's happening here. But that's gonna work out fine. Um, I made sure this is centered in the, uh, in the space and it's gonna work out pretty well. So pretty happy with that. I still have to weld the, tire, uh, the pitman arms on down here. I'll space these off a little bit from here, uh, right about there probably. Um, tie rod's relatively straight and level, so that's pretty good. Uh, yeah, this is moving right along. So uh, getting her done. So I removed the steering shaft and I was able to leave that bearing in place, just un unscrew these two set screws. And then the bearing up here removes from the bracket. I added another support here just because it was wiggling a little bit. Um, and I've got this over on the bench. I've marked where the tie rods are gonna be welded. Uh, the important thing here is to keep these level and parallel as best you can. And then also make sure they don't interfere. So this bolt, uh, if you put it in the other direction, probably never get it in and out again because of the, the brackets in the way. So this has to clear everything. So it does. I've marked my tie rod with a scribe like this, and I cleaned the, the metal. So now I'm ready to put some welds around this shaft. So uh, we'll do that next. Okay, so I've turned the heat up on the welder, and I'm gonna get a couple tacks into this right now. And uh, let's get going. Okay, you know, I can clean that off a little bit, make sure I get a good weld. Yeah, that looks pretty good. So I'll put a few more. I'll flip it, let that cool, I'll flip it over to the other side. Okay, so I flipped it over. I'm gonna put a few more tacks on there. the video and get some more. Okay, I think that'll probably be enough weld that uh, that, that won't break free. You're welded on a pretty thick metal there, so you gotta get a bit of heat into it to it fill on. Doesn't break loose. Um, show you what I got there. These aren't the most beautiful welds, but welding in a circle is really difficult to do. I don't know if you've welded on any pipes or not, but I welded on both sides of this bracket here. The first one, the second one is only welded on one side because the uh, this is in the way. It doesn't really need it on both sides, probably. Um, I think it'll be just fine, just like that. But uh, we'll clear them so that weld splatter. And next thing to do is to install this little weldment. So more to come. Okay, now's the time to weld on the quick release. I tacked it up on the cart. I lined it all up, made sure the steering wheel was straight and the pitman arms are straight. Um, I didn't show that in the video, but that's okay. You can imagine what that would look like. Just want to make sure it all it's all straight, so your steering wheel. Um, not a whole lot of adjustment once you do this. So you're going to make sure your steering wheel is mounted in straight on there. I uh, went ahead and got some stainless steel button head screws. <coughs> button head screws. Uh, these are stainless steel, a quarter inch, three quarter inch long, and 20 pitch. And so those work real well. Uh, look kind of neat too. So uh, now I'm going to go ahead and weld around this deal. And uh, we're just about done with this step. Okay, so that's all welded up. Now when you're doing this sort of thing, remember... Any bearings you have or locking collars need to be on the shaft first because once you weld your pitman arms on and your quick release on, these are no longer removable. So it's important you make sure you put them on there first. So I, I put this all on the car, bolted it all down, and then left them on there after I tacked that on there. So it's important to remember to put that on there. So I'm going to put it all back together now, and uh, we're just about there. Okay, so I'm really happy with the way this turned out. It's all mounted up and it's rock solid. Uh, able to turn the steering wheel and the wheels turn easy. Um, 
Pitman arms, tie rods all work as they should. Quick releases installed. The bearings really make it nice. These bearings that I got from BMI, I gave you the part number earlier. Um, I'm gonna put those on my other cart. These are really nice. They got a little bit of rubber bushing in them to isolate some vibration maybe. We'll see how it rides after we get it running. But um, this whole contraption, I know it looks kind of goofy, but it won't be at all visible once the cart's put together. Uh, but it is functional and everything's removable pretty easily. So two bolts, this drops out, and then these two little uh, keys up here, you, you turn those or loosen those up and the whole thing comes out. So super simple to take out the steering column if you need to. And that's the whole idea of why we did that. Um, we like simple, we like easy. So there you go. And uh, yeah, I think I'll call it the end of this video. Uh, we did do a quick uh, alignment on this, about a quarter inch toe in. And when you do your alignment, this is, you know, I think you can figure this out. You put your tape measure somewhere on the tire tread, at the back of the tire, kind of at the half mark, both sides, take a measurement and do the same thing on the front of the tire. And that tells you how much toe in or toe out you've got. Uh, in this case, we want a little bit of toe in to help this thing handle better. So yeah, it worked really well. Um, in fact, let me show you what the cover looks like on here. So that's pretty much where the cowl is gonna be. So we've got plenty of clearance for the steering wheel to the cowl, plenty of room for your hands, and it looks pretty cool, I think. So uh, yeah, it's coming along pretty good. Um, I think we'll call it at the end of this video. Thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, thanks for your comments and questions. Uh, just in case you haven't noticed, it is on its wheels, and I'll have some details for you later on hooking up everything in the back end and the throttle and all that. Next thing I gotta do is get the brake lines in so we can take this thing for a test drive. All right guys, thanks for watching and uh, have a great day.